Good afternoon, Average Engineers. Today I want to talk about a somewhat exciting topic, or at least something I'm excited about. I think you will be too, and that is Cloudflare's R2 storage and new data catalog with Apache Iceberg support. Now that's a mouthful, so what am I talking about? Well, if you're not familiar with it, Cloudflare, Cloudflare has an R2 storage option that is basically a competitor to AWS S3 with zero egress fees and the cost is very competitive. And what Cloudflare has done is sort of an, an answer to everyone else's lake house offerings. Basically with S3 tables, Amazon kind of entered the Apache Iceberg Lake House Wars, Databricks, and Snowflake have already been there, and basically Cloudflare just added Apache Iceberg support to R2 by allowing you to host Apache Iceberg tables on R2 storage with a built-in Apache Iceberg compatible REST API. You have to have this for running a lake house with Apache Iceberg and they're basically saying you don't need a third party tool make this super easy for you. Similar to what AWS did except even better. And now they have their own offerings. You can run a lake house seamlessly on Cloudflare R2. So if you're not familiar with Cloudflare R2, it's just another storage option. Like I said, very similar to AWS S3 and actually Cloudflare R2 offers S3 API compatibility compatibility, meaning you can migrate and use R2 from Cloudflare exactly like you would with S3 using S3 tools, which makes it very attractive to a lot of people. Another thing that's talked a lot about is how Cloudflare 2 has zero egress fees, meaning data leaving the platform. You're not charged for that. That's impressive. If you look at R2 pricing for storage, it's pretty cheap. You got your standard, standard store charges and then in, infrequent access storage. This may be similar to something like S3, Glacier, etc. You can see their standard storage is about a cent and a half per gigabyte per month. And then for certain Class A operations, you got $4.50 per million requests. So if you compare that to S3, the first 50 terabytes on S3 standard general purpose storage is about 2.3 cents per gigabyte. And so you can see R2 pricing is very competitive, it's cheap, and they don't charge for egress. So I know cl cloud storage costs can be kind of, you know, it depends how you use it. But again, R2 clearly a very competitive here, cheap option. So again, I want to get back to what R2 is providing via Cloudflare now, and that is Apache Iceberg with a managed R2 data catalog that makes it super simple. And I'll show you here how to run Apache Iceberg tables with R2 storage. Again, this R2 data catalog, it's in open beta public mode, so it's a little bit early. It is a managed Apache Iceberg catalog built directly into your bucket. And the R2 data catalog exposes a standard Iceberg REST catalog interface, meaning we can use our normal tools like Spark, PyIceberg, I'll show you using Daft, etc. Any tool like Talk to Iceberg can now, of course, talk to the Cloudflare R2 bucket. Now I'm going to walk you through a quick example of setting up in Cloudflare R2 bucket and then enabling the Apache Iceberg data catalog, and then we'll go ahead and create an Apache Iceberg table using some Python and actually put some data in and just see how simple it really is. Again, you can use a UI to do this, but also Cloudflare offers a tool called Wrangler. It's basically a CLI similar data, similar to like the AWS CLI people are used to, and you can use it to do commands like create a bucket, add the Iceberg catalog to it, etc. So in my case, if you're on a Mac, you just do brew install node and npm create, create a Cloudflare. That would kind of get you an app set up. And if you're ready to have an R2 bucket, you can see I created one here called it testing iceberg R2. Super simple. You can do it by the UI in just one or two clicks. And then basically your next step would be to enable the R2 data catalog on that bucket. You can see me here running that command. It's just a single command. It's simple and it spits back out to you a catalog URI, which you will need later. Obviously, you will use that iceberg URI for connecting iceberg or anything else. So the next trick would be actually creating a table, an iceberg table in this Cloudflare R2 storage bucket. In my case, I use the black Backblaze hard drive data set. You can see it here in a notebook. I actually ran this all in Databricks. That's just another note that you can do this in the cloud. You can see the hard drive data set here. And basically what you would need to do is get a token from Cloudflare UI. So, you know, it's basically a token to connect remotely to your bucket. That's pretty straightforward. You could do that in the UI or via the CLI. And then basically this is how we can create an iceberg table in R2. It's super simple. In this case, I used PyArrow. 
and obviously Pi Iceberg. I have the catalog URI, which you saw before. I have a token that I created in the UI and actually have a warehouse ID, which again, if you go in the UI to your bucket and you click on the details, it'll show you the warehouse ID as well as the catalog URI. You would just copy and paste those. Basically, you would connect your catalog, Pi Iceberg catalog, to those endpoints you would create a namespace like i did default and then you just go ahead and create a table and give it a schema in this case i'm just using the data frame of the csv file we read out of s3 that you saw previously and just turned it into an arrow table and dot schema and that's all you need to do basically run that code and it'll go ahead and create the iceberg table in r2 super easy it's just idiot proof and compared to a lot of other tools like aws3 tables, things like that. This, you know, they're pretty complicated. I've spent some time playing around with, you know, different catalogs for Iceberg, and this is definitely the easiest one. I'm going to use Daft here in this example, and I want to go back and be able to see if that table actually exists in the R2 bucket. And you can go ahead and see me connecting to that same catalog there, using Daft to read the Iceberg table and show, and you can see the empty table right there. It worked perfectly. And can we go a step farther and write a bunch of table into our R2 Iceberg table with Daft? Of course we can. You can see I'm just adding a couple configs there because basically my file is stored in an S3 bucket. Like you saw before, I'm using Daft to read that CSV from S3. And basically what I'm doing here is now just using that same catalog that we showed before, load that table. You can see table, catalog.load table, and I load that table from the catalog we already connected to. And I can just say data frame write iceberg past the table, boom, and I can go ahead and read it back, and there is my data in the R2 iceberg table. How easy is that? I mean, it's hard to explain how easy that was. I mean, that's almost as good as Databricks integration with Delta Lake. Honestly, up to this point, Apache Iceberg is planning. I've been playing a little catch up when it comes to Delta Lake. A lot of the tooling is just not quite there yet, as well as the big Achilles heel of Iceberg has always been. You need to have a stable catalog hosted somewhere. A lot of people use the AWS Glue catalog, but again, that's kind of like vendor lock-in. It's kind of a heavy solution. Data catalog, R2 bucket catalog is just it's sweet, it's easy, it just takes one or two clicks and it's up and running. And all of a sudden you have an iceberg catalog you can connect to and you can write your tables in there just like you saw, just a couple lines of code and you are off to the races with an Apache iceberg lake house table. It couldn't be easier, I'm impressed.